It's Kerry. Today we've got some really interesting prehistoric animals. I like this one, the woolly rhinoceros. Subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like prehistoric animals. Can you tell me, is the Tasmanian tiger a tiger or a marsupial? I'm expecting some trouble at the end. Thyleco Leo Carnifex, commonly known as the marsupial lion. It was the largest carnivorous marsupial to have ever lived on Earth. It had the most unique tooth pattern of many known animals with enormous slicing premolars, large stabbing incisors. It had what was possibly the most powerful bite of any mammal, living or extinct. With its powerful jaws and massive forelimbs with their huge retractable thumb claws for grasping and holding down its prey, it probably hunted other large animals. Thylacine looks like a short-haired dog that has a rigid tail. It is also known as the Tasmanian tiger. The Tasmanian tiger is not actually a tiger, but a marsupial with stripes. Paraceratherium was huge. It was about the size of a semi-trailer in length and weighed as much as two T-Rexes. That means it was almost as long as a sauropod. Such amazing size. This mammal looks like a big hairless camel. It is actually an animal that is related to the rhinoceros. It was a relative of the rhinoceros, belonging to a family of hornless rhinos, but it had a giraffe-like lifestyle feeding on the leaves of trees. Kalenkin lived about 15 million years ago. It was a species of giant flightless predatory birds of the extinct family known as terror birds. It was one of the largest carnivorous birds of all time possibly reaching a height of 3 metres or 10 feet. Its skull was 28 inches or 71 centimetres long, which included its 18 inch or 45 centimetre beak. That was massive. Daedicurus. It lived in the swamps of South America between 2 million and 10,000 years ago. It was about 13 feet long and weighed one ton. It ate plants. It had a large, thick shell, a long tail, with a lethal club with spikes at the end of it. Due to its armoured shell, it was quite a slow moving creature. The woolly rhinoceros. It became extinct about 10,000 years ago the end of the last ice age. Its closest living relative is a Sumatran rhino. It was well adapted to the cold. It had thick shaggy fur, small ears, short thick legs and a massive stocky body which helped conserve body heat. It lived the same time as the woolly mammoth. The larger horn at the tip of the snout grew to be about three feet or one metre long. really helps if you are able to share my videos on any of the social media sites that you like to visit. See you again soon. Coming up next is one of my favourite videos of prehistoric animals. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, it's Kerry. Today I have more prehistoric animals including Smilodon, a mammoth and her calf, 
Give a thumbs up if you like prehistoric animals. A saber tooth cat. My favourites are Smilogen and the Mammoth. Megaceraps. Can you tell me how many snakes are in today's video? Is it three or four? Thylacine or Tasmanian Tiger. Dinotherium and an intelligent Deodon. There's also a fun ending coming up at the end of the video. The woolly mammoth. Mammoth fossils have been discovered on every continent except Australia, South America and Antarctica. It roamed northern Eurasia and North America during the last ice age between 200,000 and 4,000 years ago. It coexisted with early humans who used its bones and tusks to make art, tools and shelter. Their ears were lined with fur and had a layer of fat to help keep them warm and to reduce the risk of frostbite. Their tusks were very long, about 16 feet or 5 meters, and were used for fighting and for digging in the deep snow. These large mammals lived during the last ice age and may have died off when the weather became warmer and their food supply changed. Their tusks are teeth that extend from the mammoth's mouth. They have growth rings like a tree, which helps identify the age of the animal at the time of death. This is my other mammoth. It's quite different. It has softer tusks to touch, a little bit different eyes. We'll have a look at both of them now. I think I like the color of the one on the right more. I sort of imagine them having quite dark fur. Baby mammoth, isn't that gorgeous? Woolly mammoths went extinct about 4,000 years ago, mainly due to climate change, which led to the disappearance of their habitat. Hunting by humans may also have contributed to their extinction. That is so cute, I love the little pink mouth. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone that's been putting all those wonderful comments on my videos. I really enjoy replying to them and reading them of course. Thank you. Smilodon. The saber-toothed tiger is one of the most well-known prehistoric animals along with the woolly mammoth and both are my favorites. Saber-toothed tigers from the Midwestern US and parts of both North and South America. They are one of the best known Ice Age animals, but little is really known about them as they are thought to have become extinct around 10,000 BC, which is a long time ago. It was named for its canines that could grow to more than 7 inches or 17 centimeters in length and were capable of fatally wounding their prey with one bite. Intelligent Durden was one of the most impressive mammals to have lived in Florida during the Miocene period about 18 million years ago. This prehistoric beast was also known as the Devil Pig, Hell Pig or Terrible Pig and was a huge pig-like animal or artiodactyl which means even-toed ungulate. This bone-crushing scavenger had bony protrusions on its lower jaws and head huge massive jaws with tremendous power. Its long legs suggest that it may have been a fast runner. The front teeth were large and pointed, perfect for ripping flesh from bone. The back teeth were flat, which is perfect for crushing plant material. Dinotherium had long legs and a long low skull, unlike modern elephants. The front part of the lower jaw 
turned downwards with two oversized tusk like downward curving incisors with a shorter trunk. There were several species of Dinotherium that inhabited parts of Africa, Asia and Europe. The Dinotherium was larger than today's elephants. The way Dinotherium used its curious tusks has been much debated. It may have rooted in soil for underground plants like roots and tubers or to snap branches and reach the leaves or maybe even use them to strip soft bark from tree trunks. Thylacine The thylacines look like short-haired dogs that had a rigid tail. It is also known as the Tasmanian tiger. This is a female and it has a baby in its pouch. They hunted in small groups. The tiger's diet includes wallabies, wombats, kangaroos, possums, potaroos, as well as birds. I love the open mouth. The Tasmanian tiger is not actually a tiger, but a marsupial with stripes. It's sometimes referred to as the Tasmanian wolf. Thylacine were at the verge of extinction about 2,000 years ago in Australia, possibly due to excessive hunting by native people living in New Guinea. Although some still survived in Tasmania in the 1930s. The saber-toothed cat. Now this is just another name for Smilodon or saber-toothed tiger. Despite its name, the saber-toothed cat was not actually related to modern day tigers that are found throughout the jungles of Asia. It is thought that the saber-toothed tiger would have roamed across the grassland plains and the open woodlands throughout both North and South America. The saber-toothed tiger also has a powerful muscular body which meant that it could quickly catch and pounce on its prey before using its knife-like teeth to cause the fatal blow. The saber-toothed cat would have been the most ferocious and therefore the apex predator within its environment so had no natural predators on the American plains. The colour of the saber-toothed tiger is unknown but it would have blended in with its surroundings. Megaceraps is an extinct genus of the prehistoric odd toed ungulates which means hoofed mammal. From the family Brontotheridae, an extinct group of rhinoceros-like browsers related to horses. It's also known as Brontotherium. It's often referred to as a thunder beast as well. They look a bit like rhinoceros but were much larger and fed mainly on vegetation. It had a gigantic Y-shaped horn protruding from its head. The horn is thought to be made of bone. It may have been used for fighting or for attracting a mate. All of the species had a pair of blunt horns on their snout. The size varied a bit between species, with the horns of males being much larger than those of the females. The males fought each other over mates. Remember to stay on for the fun ending and also to tell me how many snakes are in today's video. Some of them are well camouflaged. There's a fun ending today and also a small preview of another prehistoric animal video with a link at the end if you'd like to watch it. Just look out for the purple heart and that'll show you which one to press or click on. Thank you for watching my video. Please stay right on here at Super Fun Reviews for more great videos. See you again soon.
to subscribe, click or press the super fun reviews colourful button to watch any of the videos or playlists. Just click on the one or press on the one that you would like to watch. Thanks once again.